Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock! With an absolutely huge package from a wonderful subscriber, and a smaller one from Bricklink, all of my very own. Alright, so as always, I'm going to leave the Bricklink one till separate, and <laughs> I'll release Robin from the little slot I made for him in the address there. Uh, and if you want to send something to a future Brick Call, you can by sending it to the usual address. Uh, and hopefully you will have more luck than this person did, who I believe is Sally, who was the unfortunate person, well, he says, cutting into all this, that uh, <laughs> ended up getting their package thrown into a dustbin by my postman, who thought they were doing a good job, but clearly weren't. I mean, who's ever heard of that before? <laughs> anyway, wow. Okay, we've got an absolutely huge mixed bag or mixed box in here. I'm just going to lift the whole thing up uh, and put it, I think, on my lap, actually. Oh, it's absolutely huge. Oh, wow, there's some really interesting goodies in here. Uh, before I read the letter. Oh, we've got kind of two letters here. Oh, we've got some artwork. Oh, wow. Check that out. It's Robin. <laughs> with a lovely tash and his feather in the top. Oh, I love that. That is going straight on my fridge. Fantastic. So here is the letter. Uh, my dear Robin, I just want to say a huge thank you for all your hard work. Edward Four and I really enjoy watching your builds and I love the Brick Halls too. This is our second attempt at sending you some Lego. Our first parcel never made it and was probably the one left in your bin and vanished when you were on holiday. I know. Can you believe that? I still can't get over that. And there were so many different postmans at that time with sort of interim ones or whatever. I don't even know who to blame. <laughs> uh, it's taken another while to put a parcel together. Well, thank you for persevering. Uh, and what I consider to be the best and most useful pieces were in the previous package. Oh no, <laughs> we'll never know. They're sat on some dump somewhere. Awful, awful. Uh, so here is some old and new. Uh, the items in the pink bag are new. Some of the other items may be too, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, the kits are new, except the Ninjago, which is missing figures, I think. That's no problem at all. Uh, I've also sent you a small parcel via Bricklink. I think it's in better nick than the one you already have. I hope so anyway. Well, that'll be good to receive. Uh, Edward has painted a picture of you and signed it as well, as all artists do. Yay, thanks, Edward. That is really nice. I like that. You've got a really good expression on there. He looks cheeky. And I'm cheeky, so that's really good. <laughs> uh, and you got the skin tone right and everything. <laughs> uh, keep building. You are so inspiring with so many great ideas. Best wishes, too, to Mrs. Hood. She is a legend. I can't wait for Brick Nottingham 2.0. I, I know it will be awesome. Kindest regards, Edward and Nana Sally. Well, thank you very much, Edward, for your picture. And uh, Sally, for your lovely contribution here so wow we have got a creator kit 31123 which is like a sort of i don't know dune buggy or something like that looks like it's uh motoring around some sand dunes makes me think of arrakis having just seen dune 2 which is awesome by the way so uh, if you're into dune go and watch that in a cinema vital we've got another sort of technic set up here with this sort of pickup truck i'm not really into these sets historically but i do uh, admire some of them. We've got actual steering and so on. It's definitely a great introduction to people who are interested uh, in engineering and how these gears worked. I think if I'd done this more as a kid, then uh, I wouldn't have so much trouble doing all of my rides and so on. So yeah, the steering is levered from up here, isn't it? So I'll have to put that back together again. Give that a go. Wonderful. I've got another set here. This is the open Ninjago one missing the figures, I think. Wow! With <laughs> Sadly, I think the minifigure might be the best bit. Look at that wing guy. Uh, absolutely amazing there. Uh, oh, and those um sort of dinosaur beasties. I'm going to quickly have a peek in here and see what we've got. Got the instructions. Oh, wow! Well, it's kind of new. Or, or built once and carefully put away. So yeah, there's some really interesting bits in there, like that sort of dragon head on the front of the bike and so on and we do have one of the minifigures and it is that dinosaur guy that's probably the one i'd have chosen actually because i've never actually held one of these in my hands oh he looks very sinister doesn't he very sinister indeed and he gets his sword oh yes right ideas for where to use this guy i mean <laughs> you don't want to bump into him 
Maybe he's an alien in the alien cantina, which I've mentioned a million times and still not done anything about. Is this a... Yeah, it's not a hat, it's an actual head. Yeah, very interesting indeed. I like that. Uh, I don't know what the name of these monsters are, but um, yeah, I like them. There's a big sort of boss one as well, I think. Yeah, very good. Okay, cool. Very happy with that. Let's get rid of the box. Got an interesting base here. Again, Technic. That looks very powerful. It almost looks like a Junior's one, actually. Reminds me of sort of Jack Stone sets and stuff like that. That bit is separate. That could be very useful on something. Look at that. It's really interesting. It's like a big sort of air conditioning unit or radiator or something like that. That piece alone is very cool. But yeah, there's lots of texture on this. It might be an interesting one to use. That'd have to be quite a big truck, wouldn't it, to be able to use that. Massive wheels. We've got a planet. Talking of Dune <laughs> and Arrakis, the planet, that looks pretty much like Arrakis itself. Now, this we could use hanging from the ceiling as a planet, or we could use it as two domes uh, on top of a building or something like that. And you sort of put the turret bit on there, maybe the clock tower, and then it's sort of this sandy... Uh, color. Uh, I've also got some of these already in sand green which I was planning to use for the same purpose but I quite like it as a sandy planet myself. Maybe Dune got teleported into the orbit of Brit Nottingham 2.0. We'll have to work that out. So yeah maybe ideas for that one as well. But they are very cool pieces. Quite hard to incorporate into a city but um, not impossible. Then we've got a few sort of loose a bit. Oh I think we're in a bag that has split. Let's grab all those. They seem to be sort of stickered ones. Ugh. Da, 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 da. Oh. oh, yeah. These seem to be a choice set of printed and interesting pieces. So we've got a glittery hare and a glittery otter, which I think are from their Harry Potter sort of uh, uh, Patronus, is it called? No, that's the petrol company, isn't it? Whatever. Those sort of uh, spirit animals, anyway. Uh, yeah, I can't think of the word. But anyway, that, you'll all be saying it in the comments section. Yeah, I don't do Harry Potter, as you know. Uh, we've got a nice printed one brick there. That looks quite fun. Could be just uh, the street number for a shop and the stars as part of its sign, couldn't it? We've got some lovely mask ones, which are actually made out of plates with sticker across assembly on the top ones. They must have been containers off that really big ship. But uh, I should be able to move those quite easily using my patented hot tea technique. <laughs> Oh yes. So yeah, I can make my own mask containers. I've never had a mask sticker before, so that's really nice. An air show one on a two by six brick, sort of cracked uh, wall, a sort of cover of some sort, an Injagui symbolsy one, a big lock, that's interesting. A couple of uh, video tiles, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna have all those because <laughs> I sadly collected them all. A target, a clock, two with ice cream on. They'll be useful for an ice cream store, just to uh, augment all of the decor. Very nice indeed. Lego City. I uh, know what set that's from, 60051. Uh, and that I use on top of my bus stop. So that will speed me up if I want to do another one in Brick Nottingham 2.0. Oh, that's interesting. Those are sort of gears and workings on that. Probably would move it off that piece again. Very interesting. And a menu with sort of snowflake patterns on. I think that's from that sort of hot chocolate place in the uh, Friends Ski Lodge or whatever it's called. Anyway, so that looks really good. So I like that selection, very uh, usable. And we've got another creator set, which is this big tuk-tuk with the bright colors of the yellow and green and uh, dark azure that looks like, and pink. It looks like a bit of a funky tuk-tuk if you ask me. I can almost imagine the music pumping out of that as it's going by. <laughs> uh, it's not. So much minifigure scale, I don't think, but I'll have to build it and see how it looks. But it's very interesting pieces. We might have to try and make a scaled down version for the city that's got uh, all the tassels still hanging off it. Yeah, that's really good. Then we've got two more bags and a great big base. Let me get rid of the box. So I've seen this base before on Bricklink and I never bought it just because I thought, how on earth am I going to use it? So ideas for that. I've got a pivot point there. So I think that's the bit that goes in the back of the truck. Then it's obviously carrying something, and then I suppose the wheels are either side of this bit. So really, it's just going to be a, I don't know, helicopter transporter or something like that. And then we've got the two remaining bags, which I think I have to tip out, don't I? So we have got big, interesting pieces. 
it looks like. Da, 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 da. Tip that all on there. Wow, what's that? Oh, that is a very old conveyor piece. I've seen this before, I think. Or is it, is it Fabuland or, or is it just a really old one? I think it's a really, really old one. So that is very interesting. I mean, it looks very um, industrial, doesn't it, with this edge? Yeah, I think this came off ridiculously old sets and it seems to be missing one of the sort of wheels around it. Hopefully that's in here and it just fell out in transit. But uh, yeah, that looks great, doesn't it? Imagine that stretched on there, carrying goods in the harbour. It's obviously got a pivot point there. I think that's a regular Lego connection. It's quite hard to tell actually. But uh, yeah, I'll find that in the catalogue and see how that works. Purple castle turrets. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting choice. Wow, that's a very old... I think Belleville dog for the dog collection. A bit massive. I mean, golly, that's bigger than a person, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> That'll be the scariest dog known to man. <laughs> uh, then we've got that torso and skirt. I don't know what that's from, actually. Tell me what that's from, if you know. But it's a very beautiful one. It's probably Harry Potter or something like that. I don't really know. Yeah, very nice. A couple of plates, a trap door. A bulldog. Oh, my favourite. Absolutely love bulldogs. They're so characterful. Oh, yes. So he'll go in the city. Nice horse in white for the castle scene. Some tanks and stuff for the underwater. Here's a fella. Oh, golly. Yeah, he's an Injago fella and he looks pretty miffed. <laughs> so that's interesting. Yeah, with sort of facial tattoos. So is he, a, is he Garmadon? A version of? Don't know. That's interesting. Apollo CSM. Don't know about that either. It's printed or stickered? Oh no, stickered. Yeah, I don't know about that, but it's obviously some uh, sort of... Oh, is it the, where the lander uh, goes on in one of the big rocket sets? Uh, we've got some big old dish pieces, the sort of underside ones, almost like a tray. Maybe they could go on the inside of the cantina. Some single rails, which are quite useful actually. Uh, some other plates. Some red slopes. I need some of those for something. Oh, I need some of these for my aircraft, you know. Do you know this, Sally, is, is actually very, very timely. The The other night I was sort of starting off a basket for a new order in Bricklink, and I've actually got two of these in it because I, I still don't have these for my uh, aircraft, the 3181. Uh, so now I do. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, they'll go straight onto a build, albeit uh, making up uh, an old set. Oh, we've got two more of those. So we've got the complete dish. Or four of those. I have to work out how we can use them. Some spines in sort of, I don't know, satin metallic. And yeah, I think we're roughly at the bottom. I think I've gone through all the good stuff there. But yeah, a really, really mixed bag. Oh, and that, one of my favourite pieces for going on the underside of a, um, a rail car. A bit of damage on one side, but we can easily hide that by just having it, uh, you know, presented that way, essentially. But I really like that in white. Yes, yeah, so I have to think how I can use that in a new rail car. So really good. And then the new stuff, which is in the pink bag, which is kind of like a huge pencil case. If I can get the zip open. Here we go. Let's do this bit by bit. We've got some yellow heads. Trans yellow. That's odd, but interesting. Oh, that's wrapped up. I have to get in that. Lots of these in white. Wow. Well, I suppose I could use those in the Arctic scene as sort of uh, building up to a snowbank or something, but there's quite a few of those. They're quite hard to use. Uh, what else have we got? We've got loads of teeth pieces in white and some sort of fan bits that I should be able to use in Ninjago City. That looks good. I'm just going to tip this out over here. Ba -ba -ba. So many interesting bits and bobs to really get the creative juices flowing. Ah, and I was sent one of these the other week. Uh, they must have been on a few people's pick-a-brick walls, but you've sent me absolutely loads. There's three, four, five, six of these huge white slopes, which again could be used for the Arctic, that are a bit linear. So, um, though, if you staggered them, it could really make an interesting snowbank, actually. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because I was thinking for um, uh, a skate park, but then, you know, you wouldn't have too many of these, and white may not be the right colour for it. But, yeah, a snowbank would be really good. So I think I'll put those in my Arctic pile. Some more white bits. Arctic. Uh, some of these which are always useful for under the sea holding um, fish and so on in midair. Uh, some minifigure bases. Do you know I've got a million of these? <laughs> so, and then some small trees. Some nice dishes which could go under the sea. I wonder if they fores. Some bricks in 
what's that, Spring Green, I think is one of the names of that colour. Another one of those. Lots of these little uh, pieces for holding things on, which would be good for fish. Uh, some nice little arched windows, which would be good for some old town buildings, which is what I'm planning to do uh, when we get to Brick Nottingham 2.0. And other things for old buildings are these little mini turrets. That'd be quite good. Sort of a bit Hogwartsy, but maybe on my university if I ever get around to finishing that off. Uh, it's based on Hogwarts, uh, so that's really nice. And we've got some minifigures. I've got, hey, the pirate lady from the video line. She's really good. I've got her already, but um, the really good piece is a female sort of uh, eye patch, hook hand, funky clothing, and a pirate hat with that sort of magenta hair. Very cool. And then we've got... Oh, it's a Disney character, isn't it? Is it Medusa? It's something like that. I don't know. I'm not very good at Disney, but I quite like the expression. Looks a bit dazed and confused. And the hair, which I think is attached. Is that actually fused on? Is that supposed to be attached? Has it just been glued or what? I don't know. You'll have to let me know about that as well. With blue arms. Oh, it's ha is it Hades? I can't remember. I was thinking Hades is being bright red since he's supposed to be the god of the underworld. But yeah, and then we've got a uh, stud... Not a stud fire, a um, big plunger type fire. A, what's that? It's, it's, it's a trailer, isn't it? With the ramps for sort of rolling off a car or something like that from the past. And you'd have uh, the sort of flaps to stop it going off when it wasn't supposed to on there. Or, or sometimes I've seen it used as a ramp for lifting uh, vehicles up in a maintenance way. Uh, oh, a gold Hagrid beard. Oh, that is interesting. We could use that on a statue, couldn't we? Very interesting. Uh, a torso with a jumper on and a head of an old dude. I like that head. Nice tash. Very good. Oh, and then we have the tiny wrapped bit. Where's my knife gone? Da -da -da. This is such an amazing package, Sally. I dread to think what was in your original one. <laughs> ah, now this. Well, there's no question where this should go. It's in the cabinet, isn't it? Pride of place, no doubt, because it is the king of the sea. It is, what's his name? I've forgotten now. Neptune, there we go, Neptune. I think in the minifigure series, he's called, um, you know, Sea King or something like that. But uh, there he is, that's clearly Neptune, isn't it? The Greek god of the sea. Half man, half fish, with an old beard and a crown made of shells. And his trident, of course. So I think he'll be watching the uh, men battling with the Atlanteans, battling with the Mer people, and just thinking, Kuh, idiots. <laughs> that's what I think. So maybe that's the mermaid the boy inside the uh, underwater station saw, or maybe we'll have a mermaid as well. I do have a mermaid lined up for that role. So yes, I think he's got loads of different names, this guy. Is he also called Triton? That sort of rings a bell. But uh, yeah, he's lovely, isn't he? Love the hairdo. Yes. Very good. So, yes, thanks very much for that. That is the crowning glory of this uh, subscriber package. Loads of pieces. Wow. A couple of sets to build and have a play with. We've got some interesting things to use in this planet, which I'm going to call Arrakis for now on, <laughs> even though it's probably Tatooine, isn't it? Uh, then these uh, reverse sort of underside saucer pieces are interesting. Loads of white bits for the Arctic, which I'll definitely be able to use. A few good minifigures. Lots of other interesting old bits. Some Ninjago bits, that dinosaur guy. And, of course, uh, the man himself, the man of the hour, to fill up that cabinet. So thank you so much. And thank you for the artwork, which I shall rescue from underneath all these pieces as well. So thank you, Edward, for that. And Nana Sally, let's get on to my package. Well, what a lovely package to receive. Uh, and just pushing it back, I didn't spot the second one of the conveyor sort of guides here. So if you've got one of those kicking around, do consider sending it into the channel. Uh, but also I found a few other interesting pieces. This kind of spoiler with the X Games logo on, which if I'm doing a skate park, uh, then I can definitely use that, probably on a different piece. I found <laughs> this sort of metallic monkey which I think is from one of the Wizard of Oz, Oz sets or something like that. I can't remember exactly where, but uh, yeah, I haven't watched that film for about 20 years. So I don't remember the... Uh, no, there were flying monkeys, but I think this is something different. Anyway, he's dressed in the colours of uh, Doctor Inferno. So maybe he's sort of an evil robot monkey uh, assistant for them. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. So I might be able to use that there. Got these sort of interesting insectoid type legs. 
which are very mechanical looking and fun, uh, and part of a queen, which I do have, but maybe somebody else is in a similar dress somewhere else in the city. So, yeah, brilliant. Thanks again. Uh, right, so let's get on to my package, which I haven't got room to show right in front of you, but this is the first time I'm opening it. Oh, and it's very neatly packed. So that's very nice to see. Uh, so the first thing right on top is three uh, 16 by 32 base plates, which I will need if I'm going to be expanding into a much bigger Lego space in the relatively near future. So that is a good start. Uh, and then, wow, I've got loads of pieces for that plane uh, with all of the roof sections that I desperately need. And there's one more of the underside sections, which I think I had enough of actually. So yeah, that is all to produce that uh, 3181 plane that we talked about earlier. Just gonna tip the rest of this out. I deliberately picked a relatively small order given the huge size of Nana Sally's package. So uh, uh, we've got one more of those window pieces that I've now uh, had enough of and used on my tram. So that can go in a parts uh, bin. Then we got this. Now this is very interesting. I just bought this out of curiosity really because, well, yeah, what is it exactly? Uh, so this came from the set 4611 Police HQ from uh, 2001, which is a Jack Stone set and pretty ghastly it looks too. Uh, where it comes from a sort of police car, if you can call it that, that sort of buggy thing in the front. Uh, and obviously it's sirens. But what I quite liked about it was uh, that it's neon orange. So basically that should glow in my cabinet. So let's see if it's going to be usable there by pressing the button. Apparently it works. Oh, it didn't work. That's not a very good, uh, <laughs> that's a bit of an anticlimax, isn't it? No, that is not working. So, okay. Well, that's weird. The description said working. So I'm going to have to take that apart and have a go at the insides of that. But that does not seem to be working, does it? Ah, so that was a real anticlimax. My curiosity is not satisfied currently. Uh, but if that were to flash and make a wailing noise, then it might be really interesting. Oh, that is a shame. Did I hear a little squeak there? I don't think I did. Well, hopefully I can get into this and change the battery out because, well, they aren't usually designed to get uh, into that easily. But uh, we shall see. Do let me know if you've done that in the past. It might speed me up. Uh, we've got some minifigures. We've got this lady who's got red hair. I don't think she was supposed to have red hair, but that's fine, because that's a more rare hair piece, if you ask me. But anyway, uh, she came with the brown hair that I thought she had from 6410 Cabana Beach from 1994 on the windsurf. Maybe she's the other one. I don't know now. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, from the Copa. Copa Cabana. Yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, very nice, interesting pieces that are a bit different. I just really like the knotted pink top with the blue flowers on. So they look really nice. Go well with jeans, that, I think. Or a thong, as she's currently got on. <laughs> Whatever. A versatile piece of clothing. Uh, then we've got this guy, who's called Conductor Charlie, who's been on six sets. I got his torso before, but this is the whole figure as well. I just really like the waistcoat for all of my uh, railway stations and so on. So he's been in six sets, including 10133, the beautiful Burlington North Santa Fe, GP38 locomotive from 2004. Do you think GP stands for Grand Prix? I doubt it. I don't think they're racing these things. Nice colours on that set and a really nice figure there as well with the cap, which is on backwards at the moment. I'm not sure he's that street. There we go. Wonderful. I like him. And then there's a third minifigure who's probably the most famous of all. I mean, forget the Paradisa lady and Conductor Charlie. Who can forget the wonderful crew member three? <laughs> from the uh, World Racer set 8864, Desert of Destruction from 2004, which is dune buggies this time, it seems. Uh, again, perhaps from uh, the planet Arrakis as well, from dune, uh, beezing around on the sand dunes. Uh, and I really like the truck in that set. It's very beefy at the front, isn't it? Very sort of chunky looking. So that's really good. I just liked, uh, well, everything about him, really. I like his sort of tool uh, tools on the front there. Oh, he's got a nice logo on the back. Nice lime colour. I don't think he would have come with that hat if if that head is double-sided. So there's something wrong with that minifigure as well. But I don't mind because I like all of the pieces. So that is cool. Uh, we've got some bits for specific projects here with some uh, plates and a couple of those. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, I ran out of these uh, profile bricks in grey. So that's good to have. I need loads of these for train builds. Black ones, yeah, I think I remember what they're for, but I shan't tell you. Oh, there's the windscreen for my plane. 
I'm building up. That looks in good condition, don't need to polish that. There's a load more of those two by two ones. Uh, now the reason I've got these, I don't think it's a spoiler to say, is because they've got this groove on the side. It's not just for pattern this time, it's so you can slide something in between it. So some of those will be used under the sea for something very interesting. And some of them will be used to hold the uh, Ari's Deli uh, pieces in for that facade that I'm thinking of making into a bigger building. Or maybe just a bigger facade, because it's so beautiful. It's kind of hidden, you never see it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's the thing I'm trying to fix. <laughs> making you aware of a very beautiful building in my city. So that's what they're for. And we're almost there, but we've got one bag that is absolutely crammed full of awesomeness. So we should go through it uh, bit by bit. I think they've put all the good stuff in one bag. So we have a sort of shouty man, who I believe is Clay, uh, who I don't get many of the Nexo Knights heads because, well, I don't have any Nexo Knights sets, but uh, yeah, different expression of a shouty man. So there's the two sides of the same head there. So I just like that one uh, for use in my city where somebody's had a fender bender or something like that. Uh, and then that guy with a sort of eye patch on and the stubble, bit oldie, you can kind of tell that, and there's sort of almost fluffy white eyebrows. I really like him. Uh, so I thought I had to put him in my basket. Uh, he came in three sets as part of the Ninja Robber from 6093, Flying Ninja Fortress from 1998. And how cool is that sort of mountain fortress? And how cool is that flyer over the top? That is very cool, the sort of feathers. And wow, it looks really good, kind of Icarus style from Greek myth. That is really good. Uh, so we've got all sorts of stickered pieces here. I just basically looked through the lot. That is very badly damaged on that side. I don't think that's going to lift very well, but that did come from the 8158 Speed Racer and Snake Oil set from 2008, where it would have made up part of Snake Oil's car, presumably, in the orange there. Very interesting shaped car. Because uh, I got some of these on 2x4s uh, as well, so I just thought I'd get this one uh, for a big, advertising hoarding or something but yeah i don't know that does look quite damaged uh an ssp one of course yeah we need those whenever we see them uh, an asteroid bank for another atm uh, so that's from 5982 smash and grab a very cool um uh, space police three set i just love the little touches of those space police sets like it's got little sort of spines and spikes actually on the tow bar kind of arm if you sort of mean like it's i don't know is it just for decor is it for <laughs> defense or is it sort of partly organic or something it's just amazing detail i love it uh so that's the sort of um vehicle i want kind of flying in my ninjago city which will be sort of mildly futuristic i suppose uh but yeah, it's sort of tow truck of the future. It looks absolutely great. So that is that. Uh, then other sort of advertising things, or maybe I'll have a second uh, outlet for my Heart Lake News, maybe one in the old town or something like that. So that came from 41056, Heart Lake News van from 2014. So yeah, that needs moving, but it looks like it's in good condition at least, that one. Uh, then I've got a load of these tread plate stickers, which are three long which I'll be moving them from these pieces. But we've got three, four, five, and six. And those are the ones that I need to finish off all of the steps on my rodeo bull ride. So uh, they, those particular ones came from 7206 Fire Helicopter from 2010, whether on the truck rather than the helicopter itself. Uh, and that's why I needed six more of those. So I'll be moving those using my uh, patented hot tea technique. <laughs> to put them onto um, the, what is it, yet flamish yellowish orange piece uh, that I've got as part of that ride. Uh, now, I forgot to tell you what is actually the one worder for this uh, package that I got from Brickling, and it was windscreens. Uh, and that is because they're two very uh, hard to find pieces that I wanted, uh, and there weren't many people who had two. Uh, and they are, can you even see them? These, <laughs> these tiny, that one looks very dirty, uh, windscreens. Uh, but they're in good condition and they're not scratched and I can give them a bit of a polish. That one's a bit worse. But I think it's got muck down the little gaps in between the pieces or wedged in the back. I should be able to get that out with my little nail brush. Uh, but yeah, they're just a tiny sort of flap down windows that you get kind of on buggies and jeeps and stuff. Uh, and I wanted uh, two of these to do uh, a little, well, it's a bit of a mixed build really kind of an off-terrain, uh, all-terrain vehicle type build, but also a train build, if that makes sense. So you'll see that in the upcoming weeks. 
uh, yeah, it's just using loads of interesting pieces that I've been sent in. So I just need those to finish off that build, so I'm very happy with those. Another advert, Mr. Chill Ice Cream. Yes, that's very nice. Uh, so that's on the uh, 60253 ice cream truck from 2020, which I've got, but I'll put that as an advert, advert somewhere else or maybe in a shop window or something like that to really make my city uh, look a bit better. Uh, I forgot to tell you where the windscreens actually come from. Well, they're on loads of sets, to be fair, but uh, one of the nicest sets that these come from, uh, and two, in fact, in the same set, is 7133, the absolutely beautiful Bounty Hunter Pursuit set from 2002. Uh, I looked at that set, kind of wanted to have it just because it's so lovely, uh, but it's very expensive. I think that's mainly because of the minifigures or the rare one that's uh, sort of trying to escape the uh, Jedis uh, back when Star Wars Lego still had yellow uh, skin tones. So, yeah, that's a really nice set. I just really like that lime-coloured um, flying craft there's quite a few sort of pieces that are unique to that set so and i don't think somebody's going to sort of split it out so yeah I'm, I've, I've now put those on my wanted list uh to get uh see if i can piece together that as a flying craft in my ninjago city which i thought might be distinct from the main one i've got to do some serious planning for brick nottingham 2.0 uh anyway uh another one of those and oh here this one that's different so this is an arcade game i mean eventually i'm going to do a massive arcade i know i've got quite a big one but i've just got so many of these screens collected from things like friends sets uh and this one is from the 41329 olivia's deluxe bedroom from 2018 which sounds a bit show-offy if you ask me a deluxe bedroom it looks pretty much the same as everyone else's bedroom uh, apart from that incredibly huge uh, kind of industrial sized coffee machine she's got, she must really need waking up in the morning. But yeah, it sort of looks a bit like uh, Pac-Man, uh, but different with an energy bar and stuff. But that can go into uh, an arcade. Uh, I think the one I'm sort of picturing eventually will have just rows and rows of them, basically, all with lovely stickers and so on. Uh, Transneon orange tile for what must have been my volcano scene, but I've got enough of that now. Here's another screen. I don't know if that's the arcade or what. It kind of looks like an underground lair, doesn't it? With sort of tunneling. So maybe it will be uh, for uh, under the sea because that's where there's sort of uh, bases inside the rocks. Uh, so it's just an interesting piece, really. Uh, from 70725, the Nindroid Mech Dragon from 2014. What the? That set passed me by. I've never seen that before. And it looks amazing. Sometimes I wish I was a bit younger so I could kind of <laughs> guilt-free swoosh that around uh, a house. But anyway, that looks amazing. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that is a piece that presumably is on that dragon somewhere. I don't know. But uh, that is a nice piece. Some very tiny ones. Here's another Space Police little dial set with a few buttons and so on. Uh, that is from the Freeze Ray Frenzy set, 5970 from 2009 that I've been piecing together. And from a previous haul, this, with all the stickers corrected, looking pretty good. Uh, and this is the final sticker piece that actually goes onto that uh, modified plate there. Sort of like that, but I'm going to give this a wash and move. Uh, and that is one of my little flying space police uh, sets kind of done. I think I might modify it a bit more. I've modified the seat a little bit. But uh, anyway, that's it to start off with. So that's the final piece for that. Love finishing things off. Another Space Police stickers, this round one with the uh, sort of baddie gang sort of skull on it, I suppose. Uh, and that is from 5980, Squidman's Pit Stop from 2009 as well, uh, where I'm building the flyer on the very bottom left of that picture uh, as well. A bit of a sort of torn down, sort of slimmer one, but that looks really nice. So lots of interesting parts. I've got a keypad in this yellow, which is very cool in that it comes from the 6987 Blacktron Message Intercept base from 1988. Oh my goodness, I wanted that set as a very young child, <laughs> and kind of still do. <laughs> it, all, it all opens up, all those sort of big bay doors open up, and oh, there's lots of things to play with. Looks absolutely great, and that is the very minor part of it. But yeah, Blacktron was all the new exciting thing when I was uh, doing this first time around. So there is a tiny part of that. I'm going to use that as an entry keypad underneath um, the waves of my cabinet. Uh, here's another piece. It's a bit mucky, but I think that'll clean up all right. It's got a huge bug on it and some sort of graphs and so on. 
Uh, and that is part of the huge beastie that is in 70708 Hive Crawler from 2013, a Galaxy Squad set, of course. That sized bug is horrific. I mean, I'd need to get a big shoe for dealing with that one, I think. Uh, <laughs> and this part, I, you would have thought it was on the sort of uh, humans sort of analysing a bug or something like that, but it's actually on kind of between the eyes, oddly, of that uh, huge beast. So I don't know why a beast would have sort of a screen with graphs on it and stuff, analysing its own little creatures. Yeah, so you have to tell me if you know the backstory for that. But anyway, there's a really interesting piece. Uh, some tiny little uh, trans green kind of feather pieces. Connectors. A little chef uh, sort of, I don't know, clothing piece. I suppose you call it from Chef Eclair from the 70317, uh, the Fortrex set. 2016 i can't remember why i bought that nope don't know why i bought that uh that's for an undersea base that's also for an undersea base being the aqua raiders logo this is interesting it's a little sort of double joystick setup that i'm going to use for an arcade game but it wasn't for that originally it came on a set 8229 technic uh tread tracker from 1997 which is kind of a tank thingy so i guess these were for moving the different uh tank treads so yeah that's a really nice piece two joysticks for a two-player game lovely a missing sticker so hopefully it's in good quality looks like it is fantastic for my 8963 rock wrecker from 2009 which is kind of the bus shaped one in my opinion with the great big four buzz saws on the front which is a bit weird because a buzzsaw would not work well against rock. That's what I always think when I see that. It's a very cool thing, and they all sort of move when it goes forward and back. But against rock? Hmm. Don't think so. Uh, and here's a graph going up, up, up. So I suppose you could put it like that, and it could be down, down, down. But it doesn't make as much sense. Uh, and that is a lovely uh, tile from 60102, the Airport VIP Service Jet uh, from 2016, which I think is kind of in Trump's colours <laughs> for tr Air Trump or whatever he calls it. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so shares are up. Wonderful. Uh, and remember, everyone, buy high, sell low. That's right, isn't it? No. Anyway, <laughs> so that's that. Then we've got a plume just to go on somebody's either hair in Ninjago land or maybe on their helmet in the castle scene. Yeah, black, maybe an evil knight. Don't know. Ah, we've got this. The blue kind of sword piece that uh, came with the uh, Series 15 Laser Mac that we got last time. So that didn't take long to sort out, did it? So that will go with ooh, him. Ooh, fantastic. He's now complete. Brilliant. Right, we're washing it first, though, mate. You'll have to hang on. Uh, one tentacle and ooh, another plume. Fantastic. So loads of good stuff there on that order mainly for my plane. I'm a bit disappointed with this, if I'm honest, but I'm going to have a play around with that in a minute. Loads of printed um, tiles for all sorts of projects and a few good minifigures as well. So yeah, lots of good stuff there. Uh, but the main thing this time was the wonderful order from Edward and Nana Sally. Thank you very much indeed. It is greatly appreciated. There's so much good stuff there uh, to do new ideas with and even some fun builds in original sets. And I love the artwork. That is going on the fridge. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome Brick Hauls. Do also subscribe to the main channel, Robin Hood Bricks, where you'll see all of these parts being used, like our evil robotic monkey. <laughs> uh, and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, now, the next Brick Hall will not be for a couple of weeks, and uh, that's because I'm going to Spain with Mrs. Hood. Uh, and Amy, your package has arrived, and I'll be going through that uh, next week with one of my packages on my uh, of my own. Uh, and if you want to do what Amy and Edward and Nana Sally have done this time, then do send in a package to the usual P.O. Box address, and we will add it to a future Brick Hall. So, uh, until I return, see you! Yeah, I love this conveyor belt. So industrial. Lovely.